Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. This time I'm playing in the E100, along with my good buddy Ike, and also Ektar, who is not playing a gigantic German tank. He is playing the, the sleeker American T125. I've been calling this tank the HD100 for a couple of patches, for obvious reasons that the tank is now in HD. Look at this glorious modeling, some fantastic detail here. You can actually see through some of the holes on the front of the, I guess on the, the rim of the turret there. Wargaming have really done a great job, probably making this one of the most beautiful tanks in the game. I love the way that you can also see through the uh, muzzle brake at the end of the gun once we get through these bushes. Yes, there you can see, look at that. Absolutely beautiful model. That means that it's even more of a pleasure to play and I don't think you really need a reason like a fantastic looking model. To play the E100, it's got the biggest gun on any heavy tank in the game. It truly is a force to be reckoned with, with that alpha damage. Now, it doesn't have the highest penetration, that's for sure. It's got 235 millimeters of penetration. But when you've got the side of the track of a T57 heavy, you're still in pretty good shape. Now, in this game, it was fairly even. We're playing against some really good players in top tier tanks, and... Thankfully, there's no artillery, but that doesn't mean that we want to play slow. My plan for this game was to attack aggressively down the east. And it seems to be working out as we slam our second shell into the side of the T-57 Heavy. Hoping that I could finish him off, I didn't seem to be able to, but we're going to continue to press forwards. This is one of the beautiful things about playing gigantic German tanks when you're in a platoon. You can just push your way into positions and you have the hit points and the armor and the gun capabilities to fight your way out of trouble when you get there. Now, the enemies are trying to poke up on the ridge and when they do so, they're going to expose themselves to all of these tanks along here if they want to shoot us. The only thing that could really counter us now is if their medium tanks were dug in up here. If the T-57 Heavy kind of flanks around a little bit and tries to put shots into our side, we fire blind there at the AMX 1375, unsure whether we get him or not. Ike is taking a few hits, we believe, from the Object 140 there. The other problem that could have happened by making an aggressive play into this position is if some of the tank destroyers had ended up on this ridge line here, we might have struggled. I don't want to let this T-57 Heavy up to shoot Ike anymore. We take a big shot into the back of the turret there. Probably from an E100, but it looks like to be able to get that shot, the E100 that hit us in the back, in turn got shot by our Jagdpanzer from here. Highlighting what I was saying about luring enemies into a crossfire position where they're gonna be vulnerable. We put another meaty shell into the Object 140, and this game is just over three minutes long, and we've done 3,400 damage nearly that we have seen with our aggressive plays. Can we finish off the Object 140? No, it dips just a little bit. That would have been a flush shot on the front of his plate. And it doesn't matter if you've only got 235 millimeters of penetration. That's still going to go in through his 100 millimeters of hull armor pretty much all the time at that kind of an angle. So this Object 140 is now under a huge amount of pressure. He's having to run away and it looks like he's making his way towards Ektar. Can we sneak a second shot in? Doesn't look like we can. Oh no, Ektar's in trouble. He really needs some help right about now. The Object 140 takes one hit. Ektar connects a great second hit. Ektar faces his frontal armor towards the Object 140 and Ike saves Ektar, finishing off the Tier 10 Soviet medium tank. So, so far, what a fantastic result. We got the Object 140 killed, the T-57 heavy killed, I put a shot into the E100 and then we lured him up into a terrible position to allow our tier 10 tank destroyer to finish him off. This has been a great push, showing you what you can do with aggressive play in platoons in your heavy tanks. And I feel that doing so in the E100, it's definitely going to give us a fun game. We're either going to have an awesome game or we guess we could caught, have got caught out of position at the beginning. The brilliant thing about this is that Considering what the enemy team were, and on Prokhorovka, Prokhorovka is a funny old map for the E100 because it's quite long range, and the E100 generally doesn't do too well at long ranges. 
especially against high tiered vehicles, they will often have very high penetration and if they can't penetrate you with their standard rounds, they will load premium to be able to do so. So now, I'm conduct. I am in I'm instigating a plan here with, with Ike. I'm saying, Ike, come on, man, push me over this ridge. Get my fat German backside up here. I've had one too many schnitzels, Ike, and some bratwurst. I can't get up the slope. Oh yeah, das ist sehr gut. <laughs> As he pushes me up. I stop momentarily to slam a gigantic shell into the back of the IS-7. I consider falling back, but then I think, well, let's push on. Let's get into this dip. And this game's kind of turned into something that you wouldn't expect. Now I'm sitting more or less in the enemy's base, shooting into some very strong players in tier 10 Soviet heavy tanks. And this is a very satisfying position to be in in your E-100. It's not often that you've been able to flank your opponents. You're hidden from Soviet tanks in your German vehicles. But this game is definitely not over yet. We're only ahead by one tank and the enemies have got some very scary people left alive. Can we zero in a shot? Yes! Right into the side of the IS-7 there. We were lucky it didn't. Go high and go into that spaced armor. T-62A on the enemy team gets lit up, but he pulls back without taking any damage, unfortunately. One thing I would like to highlight is that I haven't yet result well turned to faffing to fire premium rounds. And we're doing well for it, picking up our third kill there on a tier 8 British tank destroyer. All we need now is our RU-251 Speerpanzer or the IS-4 to get us some shots. Great spotting there, allowing us to slam a shell into the back of the IS-4. We double tapped him there with Ike. And now we've got two fat Germans in the bushes. <laughs> Just dominating the end of this game. So I say, Ike, I've still got some hit points left, buddy. I'll go scout, you stay back here and you slam in some shots into their side. I think about going and stopping on the Tiger where I could hide my lower plate and angle my turret armor. So instead I'm driving in a line along here to basically keep my armor angled to give myself the most chance to avoid. And that was a very satisfying kill on that big mouth T-62A. So, the game doesn't really have a, a very exciting end. It's pretty much a standard. We outflank them and we win the round kind of moment. We lose two of our crew members there to the enemy E100 who's very likely to be firing HE rounds at us. But in the end, can we secure the top gun? Do we want to fire blind? Come on. Oh, blind fired top gun into the our opposite number, the tier 10 German heavy. So what a result here for the HD100. Certainly one of the most beautiful looking tanks in the game, at least in my opinion. I absolutely love this model and it makes getting into my first tier 10 tank in that I ever got in the game a real pleasure. Massive shout out to, as always, my good buddy Ike. This game would have been a disaster without you and just commiserations that Ektar was unable to get out of the little town over there and join us in the end of the game. His final resting place being up on that ridge, I think trying to take out that IS-4. So some key things that we saw in this replay is the, is the age old problem of Prokhorovka really that people love to camp down this western pass. They love to put their heavy tanks and their tank destroyers and they feel like if they hold here, then they, they can just clear this kind of ridge lining in the long here. They can pop people as they come up here. They can pop people as they like to hit the mid ridge and they can also attack people as they advance down the west. And that's absolutely fantastic until you get spotted. And then you find that when you're camping in the corner, 
you have to turn your turret one way, you have to turn your turret the other way. And if you've got opponents on multiple flanks, then you're simply not going to be able to, to hold up irrelevant of how, our, how good your armor is. And if there's artillery on the enemy team, they're going to be able to dig you out fairly quickly indeed. So I feel that Prokhorovka is a fight for ridgeline control and also vision control. Some positions that you can use to dominate the game are this bush here in your light tanks. It doesn't matter which side you spawn on, north, south, if you can manage to get into this bush, you provide really deep vision into either side of the map, which can be paramount into winning the game for your team. If you can't sneak your way into this bush and you're in a medium tank or a light tank, then you need to skulk around this ridge. You need to duck and weave, use the undulations, go up, get your spots, and try and get your tank destroyers and heavy tanks that will either be camping around here or camping around here, fighting. Alternatively, if you're in a medium tank or a heavy tank that has a little bit of armor and a good gun, there is some strong meta along the mid ridge and also the fight that occurs for this hill up here. What we will find happens is that people go into a position like this and use it to shoot up at the enemies that are up on the hill. And it's vice versa for the other flank. People will go and use these bushes and also sitting back here to shoot at enemies that get onto this part of the hill, this grid square here. And it sort of becomes a shootout who can manage to weaken the enemy fastest to allow then either side to push out over the hill and take the, the respective field. Now when you're playing the encounter game mode and the cap circle is here, the teams really tend to gravitate towards these positions around here. And that means that the eastern part of the map is often uh, a kill zone if you try and push down it. And you're probably better to try and push along the western part of the map with the idea of flanking around your opponent on either side. However, that's not the case on the standard mode. As we highlighted, on the standard mode, there's no cap circle here and people love to slow push the west. So if you're in a heavy tank and you can try and coordinate your team or maybe you're just in a dominant platoon, definitely try and push down the east on either side. And when you reach positions here, and here, there's really nothing that the enemy can do about it if you've cleared out the hill. Irrelevant of the game mode you're playing, be it standard or encounter, I feel that Prokhorovka is usually won by the team that either gets piercing vision into the enemy lines or alternatively manages to flank around and lock them into what I would call a, a quarter of the map on either side. If you can get to positions here, or alternatively on the other side positions here, while still holding a presence on the mid ridge, you pretty much won the game. And so at least in my opinion, that should be your goal and best of luck to you guys out there trying to achieve it. Let's just take a very quick look at the post game stats to see how we were able to perform in our E100. So a solid round here for the E100, we picked up 86,000 credits and because we didn't fire a single heat round, this resulted in a 55,000 credit profit. Tier 10, that's massive. We finished off the game with a blind kill, top gun, got the tank sniper medal in the E100 for doing a large amount of damage at long range, and also got a high caliber medal. And that's for the 7,000, over 7,000 damage that we were able to pick up. Now, considering that we did 7,000 damage here, we got quite low experience of 1,086 base, and that's because quite a few of the targets that we were shooting we were not actually spotting for ourselves. And remember, with the mechanics in the game, if you're not spotting your target, you're only getting 50% of the experience that you otherwise would have for the damage that you do. Overall, it was a solid round for this tier 10 German heavy tank. And I really wanted to highlight uh, some of the Prokhorovka meta. And maybe you guys can pick up a few tips for that and then try to dominate your own games. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And if this video has made you hungry for more gigantic E100 action, then simply click up here and you can go through to a, an amazing round by Anarchy where he picks up over 12,000 damage. Simply preposterous. And let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the tier 10 German heavy tank. Do you think it still stands up given the test of time? And also, what do you think about Prokhorovka and what I discussed here? Maybe you completely disagree with my opinion. You think there's a better way to win the map. I'd really like to know what you guys think. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.